With this franchise and the commitments of the city and RCN that it embodies, the many civic leaders, community groups, not-for-profit organizations, and thousands of Chicago residents who regularly rely on CAN-TV can be assured of CAN-TV's continued independence, stability, and financial security. I'd like to uh, call up, first of all, item number 11, which is um, a um, ordinance granting authority to renew the RCN Area 1 cable franchise agreement. There um, is um, a witness here who uh, has a uh, flight uh, to catch, and I'd like to uh, accommodate them. Alderman Suarez. To call up the RCN cable agreement, did RCN settle their differences with the... Uh... Yes, CAN's are in favor of this. Um, Commissioner? Kindly identify yourself uh, for the record, please, Commissioner. <clears throat> Good morning. My name is Rosemary Krimble, and I am the Commissioner for Business Affairs and Consumer Protection. Identify your uh, um, colleagues, too, if you will. And I have with me the Deputy Commissioner, who is also the Cable Administrator, Jim McVeigh, in my department. And we have Jeff Levine uh, from the Law Department, uh, whose title, I believe, you're a deputy as well, correct? Do you have a brief uh, statement, Commissioner? I do, Your Honor. Good morning, Chairman Burke. We have two ordinances before the Finance Committee this morning. First, we have an ordinance that is amending and updating the cable ordinance, which regulates cable service providers in the city of Chicago. And second, an ordinance that governs the renewal of RCN's Area 1 franchise. The cable ordinance has not been updated for almost 30 years. During the time, that time, the cable service landscape has changed dramatically. Technology and the business and legal landscape of cable providers has advanced, and this amendment updates the ordinance so that Chicago remains a leader in cable television. The revisions reflect developments in federal and state law, including the Illinois Cable and Video Customer Protection Law of 2007. The new ordinance also eliminates the need for the Cable Commission, and this will allow the city to effectively administer the regulation of cable services and allow cable providers to function more efficiently within the city of Chicago. The changes come at no additional cost to the city, and in fact, the ordinance expands the definition of gross revenue, which enables the city to collect additional revenue from premium services. This is why I mentioned this ordinance first as we go to the RCN renewal. Before you, you also have the RCN cable franchise renewal. The city's 15-year franchise agreement with RCN expired, and we've renegotiated a new 10-year agreement that we feel is beneficial for all. The new agreement, under the new agreement, RCN has agreed to pay 1% of its gross revenues to fund programming. And the city and CAN TV have agreed to share that 1%. This money will fund the city's three municipal cable channels and CAN TV's five public cable channels. Previously, RCN had paid a fixed amount, not a percentage. Thus, under this new franchise agreement, both the city and CAN TV will benefit as industry revenues grow. Coupled with the first ordinance, new definition of gross revenues, the city and CAN TV will be able to collect a share of RCN's profits from premium services, such as video on demand, in addition to basic cable revenues. This new agreement will ensure that both the city of Chicago and CAN TV continue to provide essential public, educational, and government programming throughout the city of Chicago. Thank you. Um, Commissioner, how much is the revenue that the city can anticipate uh, currently from the uh, cable providers doing business in the city? Uh, are you asking for all cable providers or just for this, under this particular contract? All cable providers. I think it's roughly $20 million. It's been in the vicinity of $22 million on average. State your name. Uh, Jim McVeigh, Deputy Commissioner. Uh, 
Alderman Burke, the, uh, the uh, annual amount is typically hovered around $22 million under the current scheme of things. And you anticipate by changing the uh, definition of gross revenue to increase that uh, amount? That's correct, Alderman. By how much, sir? Uh, well, uh, the cable company revenues have shown a trend of increasing year by year. We can't put a specific Yeah, we know that amount. because we're all getting bills every month that seem to go up. Absolutely. Uh, and you, nobody can figure it out. But again, it'll still be based on the, um, you know, the, the percentage formula so that um, as the cable operators uh, prosper and generate more revenue, then that translates into additional revenue for the city and for CAN TV. And if I may add, there, there are two sources of revenue. There is the 5% cable franchise fee, which is paid, which is a percentage and has always been. But under the renewal, what's additional and new is the PEG money, which is for public educational and government local access cable television. That will be 1%. And that had never been a percentage before. So it will grow along with the franchise fee of 5%. Perhaps you can... Um enlighten me. It, it seems to me that uh, there is an additional source of revenue that we should be um, uh, reaping, but, but we're not, and that is the um, potential uh, revenue from uh, direct TV and or those uh, businesses that um, acquire programming for their uh, business, which is resold then to uh, mainly high rises, and that is entertainment and ought to be the subject of the amusement tax in the city. Why is that not being done, and what is the potential revenue if we were to expand our amusement tax to include those? Um, forms of entertainment or amusement? Um, I, I should defer this to the law department. However, uh, my understanding up until now has been that federal law precludes that, but we currently have our attorneys looking at that issue, well, and we, uh, we, we do should, believe that, that, that we well, should be Well, we should do more do than just look at it because it's being done in other jurisdictions around the uh, nation. What about that, Mr. Levine? Uh, good morning, Jeffrey Levine, law department. Uh, Alderman, the uh, barrier in this instance is actually an Illinois law which provides that uh, satellite can be taxed, but only if such a tax is imposed at the state level. Interesting. What, what could the potential revenue be? I don't know. If it's an amusement tax of 9%, it would be 9% uh, on what the MDU I believe they're called MDU resellers, um, yes. gross revenues. So. so, do you have an estimate of how many of these businesses are operating in Chicago and what their gross uh, sales are? I do not, but we can find that out and we can let you know. We can send that through the chair if you like. Does the uh, does the city have a um, um, agenda in Springfield, Mr. Uh, Levine, that uh, includes this particular uh, prohibition to, to get it uh, amended so as not to apply to home rule units? I believe that's something that is on the uh, radar screen. Um, I think there are obviously there are interests that would oppose that, but... Um, well, it seems that while we're scrambling for uh, every nickel and dime that we can find um, and jacking up uh, fines and fees, uh, that this certainly would seem to be uh, a um, source of money that's ripe for the uh, reaping, does it not? Absolutely. Absolutely. What's happened in Springfield, Mr. Levine? I can check and see what uh, the status of our current efforts are there. Can you um, make sure you get that information to us before the meeting on uh, Wednesday? Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Uh, Alderman Suarez, and also, Commissioner, a uh, estimate of what the revenue might be? Yes, sir. Uh, Alderman Suarez. I'll follow up to your questions. I walked in late, and I apologize. So 
we still need permission from the state to be able to tax these people? Uh, this is just for the satellite for, and right. the reseller, not for cable franchising, not for cable which runs under our uh, right-of-ways. That we can tax. But for the, for the satellite, that's governed by state and federal laws, and it's a little... Are there other cities doing this? Um, I believe that we have, uh, we're, we're working on the research on that right now, so I cannot answer that. But when we report back to the chair, we'll include that. If I'm not mistaken, starting Wednesday, we, we start uh, the new vigilance on, on, on the dish, the way they're connected in the city of Chicago. Uh, it's already, you know, it passed a month ago, so 30 days. So, uh, you know, not looking to punish anybody, but we're looking to, to be able to be fair to our city, too. Agreed. And I, I totally concur. Uh, would it seem to uh, level the playing field, would it not, if the cable providers are, are providing the amusement uh, and pay a tax, then why not the uh, right. satellite providers? Right. We'll, we'll take a look at this. I remember that we looked at this about five, six years ago, and I, it was a negative answer at that point, but laws have changed, things have changed, and it demands but you know, another look. Maybe one of the steps that we got to take, uh, Chairman Burke, is to remind our federal representatives they have to start worrying about our cities in this respect. So these guys go to D.C. and they do all kinds of lobbying and they, they do all kinds of courtesies and then when they write these laws over there, uh, uh, they forget that, that, that the states have to run and that we have problems and some of the decisions they make affect uh, the day operation of our cities. Alderman uh, Mel? Uh, it would be probably a good idea if we're going to, if we're going to follow through the, uh, if, other, if other cities and other states are doing this and, and we have a problem in, in Springfield or somewhere and we can rectify it, we should probably get some idea how many, how many units we're talking about. There's probably, it seems like there's an awful lot in my ward I can see, you know. Well, you see it's not just those dishes that you see on the single family dwellings, Big it's these businesses that come in to a high rise and they um, offer to supply the uh, programming from just one dish on the top of the building and they can show the condo association or the co-op board that they're charging seven to eight percent less than what the cable provider is charging. So obviously if that's the the case, um, the cable uh, provider then is at a disadvantage to the direct TV provider. And, and there's a pretty significant amount of revenue, I suspect, that is not being um, uh, taxed by the city. Correct? If it's taxable, then that would be correct. Any other questions of these witnesses? Alderman Lorino? I'm sorry, Alderman Pope. I... Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Marge. Hey, good morning, Commissioner. I'm glad to see that um, some attention has been given to this matter. It's, it's been uh, an issue for years, and it looks like we've made great strides. However, I think based on what the comments of my colleagues have said, there's opportunities for additional revenue to be realized, and, and this market is growing and is, you know, to some extent, unregulated in that sense. Uh, just a, a Few questions, though. Um, the one percent revenue that we're getting, the city uh, from RCN, how often do we receive that? Uh, is it a monthly billing? Is it an annual billing? And how does Can TV get that? Is that that made directly to them, or is that a pass through through us, the city? It is. It's one percent. Uh, Can TV in the city of Chicago split it two thirds to Can TV and one third to the city of Chicago. The payments will be made quarterly, and they'll be made directly to each party. So RCN will write a check directly to Can TV and a second check directly to the city of Chicago. And we've made some progress here with RCN. What about the other uh, franchises, Comcast, WOW? What's our timetable uh, for getting things settled there? Uh, the next franchise renewal comes up in 2013 in August, and that will be with Wide Open West. Um, after that, Comcast, which is in March of 2014 for four of the five areas, and March of 2015 for one of the areas. And do you foresee this current uh, franchise agreement as the boilerplate or minimum standard that will apply to the additional franchises? 
I like the term minimum standard, yes. That's very good. And with the elimination of the cable commission, um, among other things, what, what kind of compliance will we have? Uh, what kind of oversight reporting, for example? The reporting from the cable companies will continue on a monthly basis. Uh, we've putting together a plan now for quarterly hearings uh, where uh, Deputy Jim McVeigh, who will be the, acting as the cable administrator, will have an open house or a town hall forum quarterly where people who are engaged in local access cable will be able to come and speak and will be able to review all of the reports that come in. They'll be able to ask questions to, for explanations of those reports and we'll be doing that quarterly. And that will be done in this body, in this venue, the City Council, will that be in the neighborhoods? It will be done uh, in room 805 at the Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection. Previously it was done downtown at Harold Washington Library. And with respect to our uh, compliance with MBE, WBE, those matters will still be a, a priority through the newly formed uh, organization? Absolutely. Absolutely. That part of the ordinance has not changed. There's no changes to that? No. Very good, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Lorino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think I've had most of my questions answered, but just let me reiterate uh, our, I think, our concern for um, our Springfield agenda uh, dealing with uh, these uh, satellites, direct TV issues, and uh, possibly uh, exploring that as far as uh, uh, some revenue. Um, secondly, I also was concerned about the elimination of the Cable Commission. Uh, it really was an opportunity for the citizens of the city of Chicago uh, to uh, air their complaints with the local uh, uh, you know, cable companies, probably including members of city council who were concerned about the cost of their uh, cable bills. Uh, but it sounds as though you've put something in place that would um, allow the citizens to um, bring their uh, complaints forth uh, and these are going to happen here once again in City Hall. I might recommend to you that there might be an opportunity for you to take these meetings out into the neighborhoods occasionally, and I wish that you would take that into account, um, that oftentimes when, when people have issues with their cable companies, they really don't necessarily think to call their alderman or the cable commission. They think they just need to deal directly with the companies themselves. So we want to be an advocate on their behalf and make sure that they know they have this opportunity. So once again, bringing it out into the neighborhoods occasionally, maybe on, um, you know, uh, combined with some, some other uh, programs that you might have uh, might be something uh, of interest. And I'd also uh, would ask that you would share the elimination of the cable commission and the replacement with our delegate agencies oftentimes that they have an opportunity to get that information uh, out into the communities. Uh, absolutely. We'll be doing an outreach, uh, um, presuming that the council passes the ordinance. We'll be doing outreach to uh, all of the delegate agencies as well as all of the uh, local chambers of commerce as well as to local media. And um, we'll be working with CAN TV and local media access. Fine. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Burnett. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Commissioner, uh, first of all, I want to uh, commend you and your staff. Uh, I think this is a, uh, a very triumphant event here. Thank you all very much. I don't want to look at it lightly. I also want to thank Corporation Council. I heard that uh, Steve was very involved, um, cut, was to awesome. the chase, cut to the chase, and made it very simple. So I just want to commend you on that. And I also want to commend uh, all of the people from CAN TV. Uh, there's a lot of board members and and uh, a lot of people who have shows on uh, CAN TV. Um, of course, I'm one of the people who have a show on CAN TV also. So I want to uh, commend them on their efforts and not giving up. They I think were also this, awesome, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I think this is great that we're. Um, I think this is great that we're giving them two thirds of uh, the one percent. Uh, it's just still unfortunate that RCN has taken this long uh, to comply. With this, I think that that part is very disturbing that we have gone through this. Uh, Barbara Popovich have been uh, very active in in keeping a lot of the uh, aldermen uh, posted here, and I think it, it it should be fitting since you all are in partnership now, and especially in agreement. Uh, we heard from her when you all uh, when she was having an uphill battle and challenges dealing with this. Uh, Mr. Chairman, would it be possible to hear from her now? that there's an agreement and everybody is in compliance in, in relationship to this so that we can hear uh, 
her perspective on, on this agreement and how great it is? She's uh, actually um, written us a, uh, a letter, and um, I believe she's here. Barbara, are you here? She's in the back. Okay. Barbara, are you here? She's here. Any other questions of these witnesses? Uh, Alderman Dow. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, no question. I just wanted to uh, commend you, Commissioner, and uh, RCN partners uh, for getting this done. I think it's important because it ensures robust um, funding for CAN-TV, which is very important to the city. Um, so I echo what my colleagues, uh, both uh, Alderman Burnett and Alderman Pope, had to say. I do have one question. I just want to be clear that the ordinance, as um, amended, will not alter the funding for CAN TV in the future. All right. There's nothing in this ordinance that's going to impact CAN TV negatively. No. As we not. move forward. Correct. And that can be also be applied to the Comcast and to the WOW. Uh, correct. That is correct. And in fact, you know, I, I apologize because I should have started out by saying that uh, Barbara Popovic and Can TV and I worked together. Uh, they were awesome. They, we are now a partnership going up against the cable corporations. Such a good relationship. And I should have thanked Steve Patton, Jeff Levine, and Jack Pache from the law department because all three of them really pitched in and they did a lot of work and Jim was amazingly helpful. Well, I agree that this is like taking a long time um, and I'm hopeful that the recurring contracts in the future will not take that long. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Thank you, Alderman. Any other questions of these witnesses? So as the uh, Commissioner uh, noted in her testimony, there's actually two ordinances here. 11 is the renewal of the RCN Able Area 1 cable franchise, and she alluded to the other one in her uh, remarks. This is the changes in the um, ordinance, and I would uh, like to move a substitute uh, to the one that was um, introduced. If there's any uh, objection, uh, no objection noted, then all those in favor of Accepting the substitute signified by the usual sign of aye. Opposed, and the ayes have it. And we will now be on the substitute to the original uh, introduction. So no other questions of these witnesses. Is that correct? Thank you. You're excused. Thank you, Chairman. We also have uh, representatives of the franchisee. If anyone has any questions of uh, them. Are there any questions of the representatives of RCN? Uh, Mr. Murphy, will you come forward with your clients? Gentlemen, kindly identify yourselves uh, with your titles for the record. <clears throat> My name is Thomas K. Steele, Jr., Vice President and Regulatory Counsel for RCN. Thomas McKay, Senior Vice President and General Manager of RCN mm -hmm. Chicago. Tom Murphy, counsel for RCN. Alderman Suarez. Mr. McCain, how long have you been in, in charge in, in your position? Uh, I've been the general manager since uh, 2004. Mr. McCain, why has it been so hard and so difficult to come up to a simple agreement that uh, we feel that it's fair, not just to your company, but to uh, can TV because Can TV provides such a vital service to those small operators and people that are they want to get the mess out in the community. And I'm asking Mr. McKay, not the not the council I know. Okay, uh, Tom Steele is not our council; he's a regulatory. But uh, we, we have uh, actually were almost in agreement with the city and the uh, the former uh, cable commissioner uh, prior to the uh, changeover of the administration and the changeover of the. Uh, right, but you know, it took uh, uh, at least what almost. At least more than five and a half years, if I'm not mistaken, or that, for you guys to, to come back. Because every time I asked how they were doing, uh, the message was never a positive message from the people that I talked to. You guys were uh, uh, reluctant. You guys didn't want to do this. You guys didn't want to, you know. 
So why, why does it take so long? A company that I believe has a responsibility, like you just stated, act in good faith and be a good neighbor and be a partner uh, to Chicago and the programs that CAN-TV offers. Yes, uh, it has not been that long at all. Uh, we did have a dispute in 2004 when Arshin went into bankruptcy uh, in relation to Area 2, 3, and 4, uh, in which we gave those franchises back and Area 2 is modified. Uh, but since then, we've been in full compliance with all payments to CAN-TV, and, and we've had a great relationship from that period. The renewal uh, came up last year, and so we were negotiating for several months on the renewal piece. So it hasn't been five years that we've been having Now, issues. those areas that you gave back, did you reapply for some of those uh, other again, locations again, or are you, are you just still in one area? We're in Area 1 and then a modified portion of Area 2. And what is area, I know area one is the downtown area, what does area two consist of? Uh, area two is just west of area one, uh, two and three kind of go out to How the western How far west part. do you go to area one, and from uh, where to where? Uh, area one goes from the lakefront to Ravenswood, pretty that much. I know, sir. Area two, uh, what we have is around uh, the uh, Madison uh, around Presidential Towers, which was a building that we had at that period of time. It was one of from Wedgwood Communications that was purchased uh, by RCN. Uh, and then we've got the uh, Roscoe Village area uh, we built in 2007, about 12,000 homes there. So you want to stick around, you want to stick to as much of the downtown and the closest vicinity as you possibly can, am I right? Uh, no, what we did is we shrunk down the area to what we already had serviced at that time. Okay, so... You're telling me that Presidential Towers is not downtown, and you're telling me that Roscoe Village is not that close to downtown, right? Well, uh, Roscoe Village is a, is a whole single-family home uh, area that we built, uh, so it's, it's, it was atypical of what we normally service, which is so, you know, MDUs. Your company is, in my opinion, this is my opinion, your company is pretty selective of the area that you want to serve. Which is, that's, your, that's your given right uh, you don't want to go into the inner city. Competition is healthy. I don't, you know that. And, uh, you know, uh, right now uh, there are, I believe, two or three other companies that just take over most of the rest of the city, and you guys are strictly almost downtown. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Alderman Beal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to piggyback on what my colleague was say, uh, stating. Um, through the years, it just has the perception that uh, when it comes to CAN TV that you guys were always the hurdle that we could not get over. Um, everyone in this council supports CAN TV um, because of what they do and, uh, you know, and how they operate and communicate throughout the, the city. And uh, you know, just time and time again, we just hear that it's RCN that does not want to come to the table, reluctant to negotiate, re reluctant to, to work with them, and so I think what we need to do at this point is, is work on changing that perception. If you're telling me that uh, you guys are willing to, um, you know, work with them and you don't have any problems, we need to clear the air on that issue. Um, so whatever we need to do to help you guys change that perception, because right now it's not a good perception with you guys as far as this body and, you know, working with CAN TV. So let's work to change that, and I think it'll be better off on everybody. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions of these witnesses? Any other questions? I'm sorry, Alderman Cochran. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, well, welcome to the council. Uh, Mr. Steele, Mr. McCann, and Mr. Murphy. Uh, one question. Uh, MBE, WBE with RCN, what are your compliances and are you in compliance? Yes, we've, all, we've always been in compliance with the MBEWE. Uh, it's a 40% MBE requirement and a 12% WBE compliance, and we have been uh, meeting those uh, throughout the entire term of the franchise. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any other questions? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Steele has a plane to catch. Uh, thank you for your courtesy and... Uh, Yes, I'll, Mr. Steele. If I may, I'd, I would uh, just like to uh, thank Commissioner Crumble in particular for overseeing the negotiation process. He was very fair-minded. 
and very straightforward in negotiations. And also, we did have a chance to work very closely with Barbara Popovic, and I'm sure she's pleased at this point. I know she's indicated so to the council, and we look forward to supporting CAN-TV uh, going forward with our, our 1%, which, if you were to look at it now, um, we, are spend, we will spend in this next year uh, pay three times, more than three times what Comcast pays to, to CAN-TV. So that's probably a good start. And thank you, Mr. Chairman, particularly for your concern about level playing field as well. Thank you, Mr. Steele. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a good day. Have a safe trip back home. Uh, Ms. Popovic, would you care to share any information with us? Please state your names and your titles. Uh, Michael Emanuel, Vice Chair of the Board for Chicago Access Corporation. And Barbara Popovich, Executive Director of the CAN TV Board. Proceed, sir. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Alderman. Um, when the City Council created the Chicago Access Corporation nearly 30 years ago and gave us the mission of maximizing uh, community involvement in cable television and protecting public access, the franchise renewal before you today assures that we can continue to fulfill that mandate. Uh, we believe that this franchise renewal includes all of the benefits and protections that we need to assure the continued vitality of public cable access in Chicago, and we strongly advocate for its passage. Um, RCN's financial and technical commitments as laid out in the franchise are vital to our long-term success. Uh, we wish to also acknowledge the leadership of the Emanuel administration, in particular, in particular the Corporation Counsel's Office and Commissioner Crimble and the Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection. Uh, their determination that public cable access must remain strong in Chicago was critical in bringing this to a successful conclusion. Uh, with this franchise and the commitments of the city and RCN that it embodies, the many civic leaders, community groups, not-for-profit organizations, and thousands of Chicago residents who regularly rely on CAN-TV can be assured of CAN-TV's continued independence, stability, and financial security. On behalf of these constituents, we strongly urge you to pass this franchise. And Barbara Popovich would like to add a few. Thank you, Alderman Mr. Burnett. I like your button. <laughs> Um, we're really pleased with this agreement. What it does, it, it really allows CAN-TV to grow as cable grows, and cable is growing, it's robust, we're glad to see that health, and we want that to continue. Very importantly, it also allows for parity for the public's channels. There have been instances around the country where those channels have been shoved aside, difficult to see, hard to access. That's not going to happen in Chicago, and I think it's very important that all of us applaud RCN's willingness to step up on those parity issues very early in our talks, and that's appreciated. I want to thank Mike Manuel, who is a volunteer board member, along with many of the others in the room here today, who are committed to the public. Members of the Committee, committee for Media Access are here, who've been involved since the beginning. Gordon Quinn of Cartem Quinn was here 30 years ago when CAN-TV first came into existence. So it's wonderful to have that long-term history and involvement in Chicago, which says that we will stay strong. I especially want to acknowledge the people that are here today who create the programming that goes on these channels, because at the end of the day, that's who all of us are working to protect and benefit with this agreement. Um, the council's message was pretty clear on this one. It was, there's going to be no deal without a good deal for the public. We've got two more companies to go. We're hearing you loud and clear and are very appreciative of what all of you are doing here. So thank you on behalf of all of us at CAN TV. We appreciate your help and support, and we look forward to a very strong decade to come. Any questions of these witnesses? Alderman Cochran. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to know, uh, since this deal has been made and we have the library location where recording in studio is and others around the city. How much of this deal is going to be devoted to improving the equipment that we have in some of these locations? That probably was a question that uh, might have been addressed to Commissioner Kremble, and I'm sure she'd be happy to talk to you about that. I know that the city has its plans and has, you know, now a very healthy scenario for revenue from cable. 
Um, can TV controls the equipment at the location at 322 South Green? And our intention with the funding is to be able to grow and improve and upgrade that equipment. So on our behalf, I will say it's very helpful, this deal. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Alderman. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the presence here this morning of Jeff Berkowitz from Can TV. Are you present, Mr. Berkowitz? Welcome. And uh, Gordon Quinn, who uh, Barbara acknowledged. Are you present? Thank you, uh, Mr. Quinn, who was here 30 years ago when, uh, when this all uh, began, and also Jacob Austin uh, from the Committee for Media Action. I'm sure that uh, Ms. Popovic and Mr. Emanuel have expressed what you would tell us, so thank you very much for your presence here this morning. Is there anything else, uh, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, Alderman Burnett moves then to recommend due pass on items 11 and 12. Is there any discussion on the motion? You've heard the motion. Then all those in favor of the motion signify by the usual sign of aye. Opposed? To ensure the ayes have it. And the recommendation will be in the affirmative on items 11 and 12. Thank you all for your presence here this morning. Alderman Member. Uh, Your Honor, item number eight is a uh, ordinance authorizing the approval of the renewal of the RCN Area 1 cable franchise agreement. I didn't put it um, Unless there's objection, I move to concur in the recommendation of the committee by the same roll call, which is applied to item number one on the agenda, along with the same last motion to reconsider. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam President. I, I just wanted to comment that um, I'm thrilled with this. Uh, this uh, agreement renewing RCN's uh, cable franchise, uh, it protects uh, the integrity of our cable access network, CAN TV. Uh, I would hope that this, uh, this uh, agreement serves as a template, serves as a model for when the other agreements with the other uh, cable providers come up and that we ensure that um, cable access uh, network continues to provide access to the public airwaves for average people throughout our city. Thank you. Hearing no objections, so order. Likewise, uh, Madam President, I would move the uh, same uh, motion to approve and uh, last uh, motion to reconsider to be applied to item number uh, nine, which is also related to the uh, uh, cable ordinance. Hearing no objections, so order.